أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم What do you have on that, Akhi? Um, what I've come to understand over time is that the loyalty really doesn't compare. Um, uh, as you said, the a normal guard dog that, or or a normal, a normal canine that has not been betrayed by previous owners does not turn around and betray an owner. Um, I'm not comparing women as a. Uh, I'm not comparing to them, comparing them to pets in terms of their occult and their uh, and, and being owned the way that we own pets. But um, <clears throat> what I'll do is I'll actually compare most human beings for the purposes of answering the questions fairly. I'll compare most human beings to um, some other species because we do have a lot in common with other species, even though we're the one that's been honored. Uh, we also have a lot more at stake We're the we're the species that has eternity at stake, just like the jinn do, because of the intellect we were given and the free will. Um, I'll go ahead and compare both genders to different species in many ways. Um, the truth be told, we have acted more as man's best friend. Man's best friend is actually not really the dog or the wife, but it's, it's man himself. We have to be our own best friends. It's, uh, it's something that we were forced to do. Um, because on one hand, we have dogs for specific purposes, utilitarian purposes, some sort of service. We, we Muslims can't keep them just as pets, especially in the house. And so if this is what Allah revealed for us as Muslims, then this means that it, it is good for human beings in general to not have dogs in the house. Um, so for mankind in general, there has to be a distance in between us and, um, any dog that we own, not even because we hate them, but because of cleanliness. We have to be clean. Health is a, is a necessity. Um, if I'm not mistaken, is health one of the six sacred things, six sacred possessions of a Muslim? Yes. Okay. All right. So being one of the six sacred possessions of a Muslim, we are, we are compelled to, to defend it. Just like your lineage, uh, your wealth, your aqua your religion. You confirmed for me that, that that is one of the six sacred kings of the Muslim. And so therefore, um, we have to, we're, we're compelled to defend it and to preserve it. It's not an option. It's a compulsion. Um, the same thing uh, when it comes to um, the akal and someone's deen, someone's wealth, the lineage. And so through no fault of the dog, there's a point past which they cannot be a best friend or a friend but they have to serve a utilitarian purpose and we have to serve that for them. Even if we can like and appreciate the, the pet we have and even despite their loyalty to us naturally, provided we don't um, oppress them somehow. So now we're forced to be our own best friends in that regard. And we have to understand that this is, this is the reason why it is that we're even um, uh, making this comparison. Naturally, we would make it because we understand the canine's loyalty. We understand our loyalty um, to those who have done well by us, those who have done us well, those who have treated us well. We realize this loyalty. The nature of most of the women is more like a cat. Now, the cat will stay in your house. It will not engage much with you. Um, you have to show them something that they can chase and pursue as a, as a type of prey in order to entertain them. And it has to be something that's going to get up and move away from them. They will, in general, keep the place clean. That is true. That's one of the strengths. Um, they will stamp out the pest or repel the pest. That is also true. And that's why you can have them in the home, but you can't expect the same loyalty from them. It's sad to say because they're told that, that they should be loyal, just like we should be loyal to them. But in the reality that we're dealing with, from the very beginning, their relationship shows that they're going to put themselves and even strangers above you if they're empowered to do so. If they can do that, that's exactly what they will do. And so that's why when a guest comes over, the cat's going to walk up, rub the guest's leg, but he might, they may not let the guest pet them. Um, if the guest calls the cat, then the, the cat won't do it. But if the guest ignores the cat and is focused on the host, 
or something else, then the cat comes and wants to get attention by rubbing their scent on the leg of the guest. So it's whatever the guest is not trying to do that the cat's going to do. And that's exactly what I found that not even Western women by themselves, but I found that many women who don't, who are not bound by culture and society and or religion are going to do the exact same thing. There are strengths they'll bring to the home, but in, in terms of a loyalty to the owner, yeah, uh, feed me. It, it comes down to that. Um, they're looking for the food and they're looking for, they're looking for what they gain, the food, the shelter, uh, the things that they can gain from the man. Whereas, and I just read this proverb yesterday in another Facebook group, the dog is never ashamed of its owner, no matter the situation. Hmm. But despite that, uh, we are the ones who generally act more like the dog in terms of loyalty than the women do. And they act more like cats do in terms of loyalty. Yeah, they'll stay there. They'll stay around. Um, but you, you got no clue what they're doing when they're out, when you're sleeping. Um, and the funny thing is that they actually are more independent. When you talk about the two species, the cat is more independent than the canine. That's true. But when you start talking about the genders, of course, the man has to be independent and he's still loyal. And then she is more dependent, but she is the one that is more, we've seen the, the, the divorce filing statistics. She's the one that will file for the divorce 80% of the time if she is empowered to do so. And so every time a law reveals something and on the surface, it looks like it's unfair to women and it looks like something that some patriarchal possessive man just threw in there um, for the sake of his own corruption. You see in the West and anywhere else where um, uh, where Islam is not the prevailing system, why it is that this was revealed. You see now why it is that um, they have to request a divorce in the court. We can pronounce a divorce on the spot. You are, now we understand why. We don't do this for no reason. And they will do it for any reason. Uh, when, uh, when the Quran says that we are the protectors and the maintainers of women, um, then, I, well, actually, that right there is the explanation as to why we are raised a degree above them. And it says a degree. And when you translate it in English, it says a degree above women. Well, that's because of what we have to do that they don't do. So in all, you know, in all honesty, not only are they not bound to provide for us and to protect us, but in many cases, they are incapable of doing that, especially if they're called upon. They're more likely to provide for you on occasion and protect you on occasion if no one asked them to do it. But if you request it or someone else requested, then all of a sudden they can't do that because they, it's the expectation of that that really bothers them. There are many scenarios where a brother was uh, just getting out of prison or uh, one, one situation where they both uh, had uh, places to stay and they were they got married so they were trying to decide would you will you stay with me or do I come live with you you know the husband versus the wife and because the wife stayed in a better neighborhood the husband gave up his apartment to move in with her which was another apartment basically but a better neighborhood uh, she had a degree above him. If you're talking about the maintenance, one of the reasons that we have a degree above women because our responsibility is higher, you know. So uh, he gave up his apartment uh, when it didn't work out. Now he's apartment less. Uh, many brothers have complained that they went into a different situation where they let her sign the lease for the car or they let her uh, get the car on her credit or anything like that. Any degree of authority that she had over him uh, came to bite him in his butt. See, like I mentioned about the canine, just as you mentioned, always appreciative. You know what I'm saying? Always appreciative and always and do, do not betray. But uh, when it comes to the species that has Akhl, uh, by Allah to Allah, they have the ability to betray even if they are sternly warned against it by text. Well, in a nutshell, um, uh, I, I've begun to think that maybe their demands and their lack of loyalty were little more than just uh, a test for us. And that maybe even that's why it is that uh, not only due to the difference in population demographically that women tend to survive into adulthood more than men in most societies, historically speaking, 
but also due to the um, the lack of appreciation that this is part of what's going to to put more of uh, or make them the majority in Jahannam because they become the majority in adulthood or past the age of reason anyway, in which case the sins can be recorded for a person. And then additionally, it's that it's, it is that lack of appreciation. Um, and what I've noticed about the Western sister, uh, when I say sister, I mean, racially speaking, just the, the Western African, the, the Western woman of African descent. What I've noticed is that they have a tendency to ask or to try to get the things that, uh, that the man cannot afford at that time. Whatever a man can afford at that time is not going to be what they're going to request. They're going to look for something more and they'll get it in their own name if they can, partially in order to get this authority. I, I, when, I, when I look back at it, I realize that um, not only did I experience this, but what I, I noticed is that other my friends were experiencing this and whatever they could afford at the time she always would want something else and she would say no i want to get this now i'll just go ahead and get it in my name and you can foot the bill mm -hmm. or the monthly payments uh, or take your pick they would do that so they would then uh, uh they would then when uh, uh, they would never say okay well let's give up this in exchange for that and so then when the man is now stretched thin they come along and they start saying you're not uh you're not what you should be or um or they start to compare him to another man. And I began to realize that this was a very intentional thing. This is not a lot, just like a lot of things that people are seeing. These patterns aren't coming about simply because we're human. They're coming about because they have agreed. They've traded notes with each other to do this. <laughs> Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. 